recording now. You can start when you're ready. Thanks, Mark. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Cheryl Goddard, and I am a senior planner with the City of Chula Vista Development Services Department. And I am joined tonight with Mark Caro, uh, who is a landscape architect, also with our Development Services Department. And we are here today to talk about trails within the Rice and Snake Canyons. Uh, and this slide is actually a great shot. It was a uh, a screenshot taken from one of our drone flyovers from our land development group. Um, here you can actually see both canyons in the in the shot. We have Rice Canyon to the left or the north, and then we also have Snake Canyon to the right or, or the south. And, and here you can kind of orient yourself by, by seeing Costco and, and the Walmart here um, just to the south of Snake Canyon. We have had our comment plan for this project open for the last week or so, and, and I actually have it open right now. We've received a, a, a lot of support for this project. We have about 72 commenters. Um, and you may also continue to comment uh, throughout the presentation and even when the presentation is over. Claudia has provided the link in the chat if you'd like to comment. Um, so we'll talk about Rice and Snake Canyon first, and then Mark will be presenting on the city's efforts to draft a trails master plan. And then we'll close the presentation with a, a Q and a uh, portion. Here we're providing you with an outline of tonight's presentation again, um, giving you some overview and, and purpose of, of the pilot program. Um, what about balancing open space preserve and conservation with public access. We'll look at the alignments and trail improvements, and then we'll talk about uh, the status and next steps for the pilot program itself. And then Mark will again talk about trails, the trails master plan and, and some of his efforts. Here, I want to provide a graphic that orients everybody to where Rice and Snake Canyon are located. So here we have the city boundary and Rice and Snake Canyon is in the Rancho Del Rey community in Central City. Um, you, it is bounded by the Terra Nova community to the west. You have Bonita up to the north, um, Otay Lakes Road on the east, and bounded by East 8th Street to the south. And then you have Rancho Del Rey Parkway that encircles uh, Rice Canyon. Here is just a close up and an aerial again to orient. Here is Rancho Del Rey Parkway, Rice Canyon in the middle. Snake Canyon to the south. We have we have Discovery Park here. We have the Rice Canyon Preserve parking lot here. We have Paseo del Rey, the YMCA, the fire station, East H Street, um, along with Costco and Walmart and Home Depot. We have Del Rey Boulevard here. Um, and so you again, you have Rice Canyon Trail, Snake Canyon, and then what we will call the uh, some folks re refer to as Candy, a segment called Candy King. So the Rice and Snake Canyon Loop Trail Pilot Program um, is an opportunity for the city to find and identify existing formalized trails within the city. Rice and Snake Canyon were formalized within the Rancho Del Rey specific plan area. It was analyzed in its environmental document, which was an environmental impact report that allowed for both hiking and equestrian use. So with this pilot program, we want to look at opportunities where we can add single track segments to the existing formal trail system. And we want to expand the multi-use uh, trail system to also authorize mountain biking as an allowed use. And we would also like to implement some trail improvements. The pilot program itself would be one year. It would allow staff to monitor trail use. Uh, it would allow us to monitor and manage impacts to surrounding habitat, uh, be able to identify redundant trails that can be closed, user created trails that are not part of the formal system. It'll be an opportunity for staff to formalize partnerships and create a volunteer program with trail maintenance days. And it'll also allow us an opportunity to collect budget data. Um, this includes the cost to implement improvements and then the long term management uh, and maintenance cost. 
This graphic shows us the a portion of the existing Rice Canyon Loop Trail that was part of the Rancho Del Rey specific plan. So the trails in pink allow for both hiking and equestrian use. You can see that they head north into Benito, which is a part of the unincorporated county. Um, the idea was, was for it to go into Benito, loop to the east, and back down towards Discovery Park. And then we have some hiking only trails that come in through Snake Canyon and then back up to connect to uh, Rice Canyon. There are some pathways along the southern end of East H Street and Paseo Ranchero. And then there is a sewer access easement road behind the homes um, along East H Street. But tonight we wanted to talk about the loop trail that we're proposing to add mountain biking. And those would be the portion just in this yellow and orange um, segments here. The main, the main trail within Rice Canyon is actually the maintenance road. So it's pretty wide. I'll have some photos later in the presentation um, that'll showcase the access road, which is probably about 12 to 14 feet wide. We would like to add the single track within Rice Canyon as a part of the trail system. It is existing. We are not creating this trail, but would like to add it as a, a formal segment to the trail system. Um, we are identifying the staging areas uh, in Rice Canyon and Discovery Park. Uh, we have contacted the YMCA and Home Depot to see if they are interested in having a staging area in their parking lots. And at this time, they are not. So we have removed those as potential staging areas from our, our maps at this time. We wanted to talk about why we chose this, uh, this loop trail as the pilot program. One, we were looking for trails within the city that were already covered under an environmental document. So we were lucky to find this with the Rancho Del Rey EIR. And we also wanted to keep the trail manageable, the system manageable for our existing staff, our existing budget, and our existing resources to be able to collect the data that we need um, to inform the city and to plan for future trail areas. Um, the loop itself is four miles. It includes three miles of trails and also one mile of connections on sidewalk or, or bike. So here are photos from Rice and Snake Canyon. The top photos are from Rice Canyon. You'll see the main trail is pretty wide. Um, they are meant to allow access to maintenance vehicles like city sewer, as well as SDG&E maintenance vehicles. Um, we see that the trail is signed already as Rice Canyon Loop Trail. So those are found along the, the main segment. We have a photo of what we would like to add to the trail system, which is a single track, probably about two to three feet wide, um, and it would remain two to three feet wide. We would not be uh, proposing to widen the single track. Um, we have a photo of Snake Canyon on the bottom left here, also meant to be a single track. It's a little wider, maybe about three to four feet wide, and this is on the eastern end looking west. The trail, the Snake Canyon Trail, then pops out um, in this flood control maintenance road. Uh, you have a swing gate here and then up to the Home Depot upper parking lot. This photo is part of what we had mentioned as the candy cane segment, and it is a sewer maintenance access road, and you can also see that it is signed with the Rice Canyon Loop Trail markers. So one of the things that makes these trails great is that you are in an open space preserved area. It is an escape from our built environment. Um, we've got homes and businesses and commercial areas surrounding the canyons. And But once you enter into the canyon, um, you can't tell that there's a busy Costco or a Walmart just feet away. Um, so here we show you what our open space preserve system looks like throughout the city of Chula Vista. And those are the areas in green. We have Rice Canyon and the Rancho, De, the Rancho Del Rey community in the center again. Um, and 
these preserved areas were set aside as mitigation for the development. So its main goal is conservation and is to protect the habitat and, and species that are found within the canyon. Some of the sensitive plants and sensitive birds that we do find in both canyons are San Diego Thornment, which is uh, we included a photo here, Otay tar plant, variegated dead, deadlia, and we also find sensitive birds like Cooper's hawk, coastal cactus wren, willow flycatcher, and then the California gnat catcher. So these are these are located throughout the canyons. Um, we the lands have been set aside for their protection and for us to protect and to enhance their habitat. So we want to keep in mind that as we are looking for recreational uses and public access that we want to balance it with what those lands were initially set aside for. So when we're looking at the trails, we are, have identified some trail improvement. Um, we'll have some photographs of what we of examples of what we'd like to see out in the trails. Um, that includes an updated trail map kiosk at the Rice Canyon Preserve staging area. We'd like to add signage to locate trailheads and, and include trail etiquette. We'd like to identify redundant trails um, that can be closed. We uh, acknowledge that there throughout the year there may be seasonal times when we need to trim back and remove some vegetations that may prohibit access to the trails. There are some footbridges within Rice Canyon that we will take a look at to see if they need to be replaced or repaired. Um, and then there's some minor grading that we can do along the single track in Rice Canyon um, to prevent water from ponding on the trail. And then we also have some wet areas in Snake Canyon we'd also like to address. So here are some photos of, of what we have listed. The trail map does need some updating. Um, we'd like to get that put in. Examples of trail signage. Um, here you see the eastern end of Snake Canyon, and um, there's a couple ways you can enter into Snake. So we would like to identify what makes the most sense as far as including it as a part of the formal trace trail system, and then closing off the redundant trails. These bottom photos are from the single track um, in Rice Canyon, some veg, uh, vegetation trimming. This is a pipe that's been exposed that carries the water from the hillside down to the creek. So we would like to bury that and make sure things are safe. So an example of the footbridge in the single track in Rice Canyon, just taking a look at if it needs to be repaired or replaced. And then the last two photos are the wet areas in Snake Canyon that we would like to find a, a better solution for so that the water doesn't uh, stay on the trail uh, as long as it currently does. So today we have solicited feedback from some focus groups, some trail user groups, including the San Diego Mountain Biking Association and the South Bay YMCA Trail Runners. We have presented to the Chula Vista Bike Walk uh, group back in August of 2020. We did receive a lot of great feedback, a lot of support for the program. Um, and as I mentioned, with the e-comments, uh, the e-comment link has been open for about a week. And so we have summarized uh, some of the main themes that we have received. There's a lot of support for the expanded multi-use trail system to include mountain biking. There were comments that they appreciated the the effort the city has for balancing conservation and recreational uses. There were some comments about including bike skill in the trail system, and that is something we cannot accommodate. Um, again, these trails are located within an open space preserve. Um, the trails are meant to be a passive use for hiking, biking, and some equestrian use. And we are actually lucky to be in South County because we do have bike skills park located nearby. Uh, the county has its Sweetwater Bike Skills Park in Benita between the Sweetwater Little League fields and their Sweetwater County Park. Um, and that's probably about 10 minutes from Ranch Del Rey. The city of Chula Vista is also uh, in the process of constructing the Great Cox Bike Skills Park down in the Otay Valley Regional Park. Again, maybe 10 to 15 minutes away from Rancho Del Rey. Um, the, the 
bike park um, in OVRP is going to be located off of Main Street, so 805 South and Main Street. Um, and that should open within the next couple of months. We also received a lot of comments that it would be beneficial to add trail signage, um, trail locations, trail etiquette, um, and some comments to say don't over sign the trails. Um, and I agree that trail signage can, can there's something called trail pollu or uh, sign pollution. So we don't want to have too many signs out there. Um, we had comments regarding potential trail user conflicts, specifically in Snake Canyon, um, with the with the moderate uh, downhill grade coming from east to west. Um, so we will be looking at that and whether we sign it as a one way trail system or if we at first just monitor and observe to see if there are actually any user conflicts out there. We receive a comment about electric bikes out on the trails and whether or not the city has a, a policy in place. And we don't at this time, that may be something that comes out as a recommendation at the end of the pilot program. E-bikes um, off the shelf are meant to uh, have a speed no more than 20 miles per hour. Um, but again, we, as a part of this pilot program, we'll be monitoring the trail use, um, including e-bikes. And then we had a lot of comments about volunteers. A lot of longtime residents want these trail systems in and are willing to come out and help on trail maintenance days. So that was encouraging to, to see and, and, and read. So what are the next steps for our pilot program? We are in the process of outlining trail um, uh, costs for the trail improvements we've identified. We're looking for funding. Mark has actually put together a grant application um, to implement some of these trail improvements. So hopefully we'll hear back on that within um, the next couple of months so that we can schedule to implement the improvements. We are going to be seeking volunteers for trail maintenance days. Uh, Mark and I will be presenting a similar uh, PowerPoint to City Council on March 16th. Um, and then we'll start to monitor and manage this multi-use trail system. And then uh, at a future date, we'll report back to City Council with our observations and recommendations for this loop uh, trail itself. And then as Mark is working on the trail master plan, things that we can uh, recommend for that project. So I'm gonna hand this over to Mark and we'll talk about the uh, trail master plan. And thank you, uh, Cheryl, and good evening, everyone. Again, I, I am Mark Carl. I am a landscape architect with Development Services. Uh, the city's general plan and parks and recreation master plan both include policies that promote the development of a citywide trails master plan. Um, this plan will create a circulation link to link our paths, bikeways, um, open spaces, parks, and recreational facilities, further enhancing our mobility and recreational activity around the city. The master plan will focus on trails within open space areas, balancing prote uh, the protection of natural resources while also providing public access into these spaces. Uh, next slide, please, Cheryl. So it's envisioned that the master plan will include sections such as trail plan, which will take the inventory of existing trails and map out the complete uh, system including linkages to pathways and bikeways identified in our recently approved active transportation plan, as well as neighboring regional trail plans. The plan will also identify staging areas and ensure accommodations are planned for accessibility. Within design and construction, we'll determine a hierarchy of trail types and develop standards for trail features and construction materials. Next slide, please. There will be a section to discuss how the system will be managed, including opportunities, as, as uh, Cheryl mentioned, for volunteer groups to assist. We'll also look at what rules and regulations will be in place so that the trail system is successful and sustainable. As we look to Im implement the program, acquisition and or dedication of areas may be necessary to bridge gaps between existing trails. The overall system won't be installed at once, so there'll be a need to um, there'll need to be a discussion on how we go about prioritizing segments to construct as funds become available. 
And as time progresses, it'll be important to keep to keep you, the community and stakeholders involved so that as we're able to acquire funding, uh, we want to make sure you're included throughout the process. Because things might have changed from the time we've completed the plan to when we're actually able to build some of those segments. And this might affect priorities identified in the plan. Next uh, slide. So the status of the trails master plan, as uh, Cheryl mentioned, we're actively seeking grants to, to submit applications that will help fund the drafting of the master plan, as well as to implement the pilot program. So Cheryl mentioned we were looking at a grant for funding the um, some of the costs for the pilot program, and that is the neighborhood reinvestment program grant from the county of San Diego. Uh, we actually. Uh, we'll be submitting that in a couple of months. We still need to go to council for approval uh, to submit that. So uh, within the next couple of months, we're actually submitting that to the county. SANDEG has the Smart Growth Incentive Program, which is uh, one that we think is a good uh, candidate for our, our master plan, because that usually focuses on uh, planning type projects. However, that the next cycle for that grant is not anticipated till uh, 2022. But that's okay because this pilot program will help inform um, our grant application and it'll allow us to have a better application when the time comes for the master plan. And then there's the Wildlife Conservation Board uh, from the state of California, the public access pr uh, program grant. It's something we continue to monitor because that's another one that has uh, the abilities to provide funding for trails within open space areas. Next slide, please. And so what the next steps for our trail master plan is to secure the funding to draft that plan, uh, then select a consultant who will lead us through the actual trail planning, prepare any necessary environmental documents, and then finally look for funding to implement the plan. And so that really concludes our presentation. And I think um, if we want to go to our questions, this is a good time to do that. I, um, Claudia and, and Patricia, I have the uh, comment page open. So we do have one question. Snake trail has been a legal trail for many years now. Why has the city not maintained it in the past? How does this pilot program have a chance? If the same people that are in charge of snake trail over the years are in charge of this pilot program, um, snake and rice Canyon single track loop system. So uh, um, our, our city budget is, is limited. Um, the open space area has a, a um, open space district that uh, provides the funding for maintenance. Uh, I will tell you that this pilot program is something that our, all our departments support, our city manager's office supports, um, and it is a program that we are focused on, on implementing. Um, and part of that is going to be collecting the data to maintain that trail. What is the manpower? What is the staffing needs? And that all is going to be reported back to city council. So it is um, a focus for for our city and for our departments and for our city manager's office. If anybody else has questions, again, the link is in the chat. don't see any other questions coming in when we're going to stay on for a bit. I'm just going to put back my screen so that you can see um, Mark, uh, my, my email and Mark's email. So if you do have questions, you, the e-link is going to be open until March uh, 15th. And then because it is going to city council, then you'll have an opportunity to comment on the city council agenda. Got two questions that have 
from men or one, at least one question. Will this impact people who like to walk with dogs on the trails? So no, the trail system is meant to be multi-use. Um, in that one graphic you saw where it was going to be hike, hiking and equestrian, and the, which were the pink trails in Rice Canyon and heading up to Bonita, um, we would only be adding mountain biking to the existing uses. Uh, same thing for Snake Canyon. It is um, hiking is an allowed use, and now we are adding uh, mountain biking to that uh, use. So, uh, again, as, as some folks have commented, there were is concern about Snake Canyon and potentially um, signing it as a one way way trail uh, heading westbound. So we uh, will we'll be monitoring for that and looking into that, um, working with our open space inspectors that, and getting their input as well. Susie uh, Murphy suggested looking uh, at grants for trail counters to gather data um, for trail use. Uh, I know there are, tra I used to work for the county and we use trail counters out in the Tijuana River Valley um, and that those trail counters are great. You can differentiate between equestrian and hiking and mountain biking. So we may look into that so we can get a, a, a really a, a good idea of, of the popularity of the trails and, and how often they are walked and ridden um, throughout the year. Um, we have a comment um, just saying that they hope council approves. So we we will be presenting the city council as an informational item. Um, it, it and and uh, taking their feedback on it, but it is not an action item for city council. We will be implementing the pilot program, um, but presenting to city council for it first so that they are aware. I'm going to again just share my screen so you can get our email contact information. Still looking at our, uh, our page here to see if anything else comes in. Um, not seeing anything right now. So we have a comment um, that acknowledges um, or suggests that one important consideration for Chula Vista is the primary purpose of the open space. Um, we did have the slide talking about balancing uh, conservation and public access. Uh, the comment is that uh, that the Rice Canyon, that, that habitat preserved land serves as mitigation for habitat loss to development. Recreational use of trails should only be allowed to the extent it is compatible with habitat species preservation and that significant resources are available for management. Um, so that we can achieve a balance between habitat preservation and recreation. And 
And then we have another comment that states Rice Canyon Trail seems to be far more developed than Snake. Um, that is true. The Rice Canyon um, main trail again is an access maintenance road. Uh, we are including that single track that uh, traverses about half of uh, Rice Canyon. Um, that'll be about two to three feet wide as a single track segment. Got an email asking when the pilot program will start and what date will mountain bikes uh, be allowed on the trails. Um, so again, we are presenting to city council on March 16th, um, unless they have directions to not move forward with the pilot program. Uh, we, we intend for for it to move forward um, after a city council presentation on March 16th. I received another email again um, discussing the balance between preservation and and recreational use and um, really recognizing again that the main purpose of this open, this open space land was mitigation for the development area. Um, the comment includes understanding the baseline conditions as it stands today um, and as these authorized trail uses are, are allowed, what impacts it has to uh, the surrounding habitat. And that is something we, we will be doing as a part of this pilot program. We want to understand uh, what impacts are going to be happening uh, as we allow uh, mountain bikes on the trails. Um, because we are focused on and putting in a formal trail system, we're hoping that folks stay on the formal trail system, that there are no user created trails that allows us to identify redundant trails that we can sign and close off and um, look for funding to restore those areas um, so that we do have just one formal trail system. It recognizes as we formalize trails that there is a significant uh, staff and volunteer management that's required as a part of you know, an infrastructure system in the city. Um, and, and that is something we are going to be collecting. That's the data that we need so we can bring back to our departments and back to the city manager's office, as well as the city council, that there is a full understanding of what that budget uh, need and staffing need is for these types of trails.
Claudia, I can't get back to the comment page. I know one came in, but I can't see it. It timed me out. The last one that I saw, um, there's a question about fencing. Is it going to be appealing or is it going to be chain link fence? Oh, I, I didn't talk about that actually. It's the same in Rice uh, Canyon. Um, we are proposing some fencing um, along that single track. Uh, we received funding from Sandag Environmental Mitigation Program um, to place fencing so that it, that area is not widened. We do have some tar plant and thornment in the area. Um, it is um, split rail fencing that's out there. Um, and the intention is to put it on one side or the other based on where the resources, the sensitive uh, resources are. Um, there's existing fencing there now. We'll be looking to repair uh, any damages with the funding we received and to add uh, additional fencing in that area. So it will not be chain link. It will be um, like a split row. We have a question about how the community can show additional support for this program. What's the next step? Any in person dates yet to show up and help for trail maintenance? Um, love to hear you support at the city council meeting on March 16th. Um, we don't have any trail maintenance days scheduled yet. We'll be working with our public works space. A division to put things on the calendar um, and work with them on that. So uh, stay tuned. You also want to mention that the e comment link will be available until March 12th. So if um, people go onto our website, they'll still be able to do that up until then. And I don't know if you know the answer to this. I got a message that you can only comment once on the e-comment. If that's the case, um, again, you have uh, our email addresses. So you can feel free to send Mark or I um, questions or comments, um, and we are definitely taking note of them. We're logging them in into a, a matrix so that we have uh, people's comments registered, and we're highlighting everything with your suggestions. I think you can only comment once if you are in as a guest, but once you register for an account um, under the e-comment link, then you can comment as many times as you want. Also want to mention that the recording of this meeting will be posted online tomorrow. So if anybody missed it or they want to see it again, it will be available. I have a question um, regarding the Rice Canyon single track. Um, actually, uh, well, let me get this question. For uh, mentioned the Rice Canyon single track going halfway down the canyon. Any thoughts about extending that the full length of the canyon? Um, no, not at this time, not as a part of this pilot program. It's something when we look at the trails master plan, um, 
could be an extension, but no, not at this time. Question about are the rice and snake uh, trails approved by the wildlife agencies? So again, um, this, the Rancho Del Rey uh, SPA plan analyzed these trails back in the uh, early 90s. Um, they were approved as part of that environmental document pre MSCP. Uh, so when our MSCP was approved, they were already shown as a um, an allowed use. Um, the single track in Rice Canyon, we had applied for a Sandag um, environmental mitigation program um, grant. We received and in our application, we identified that single track as a part of our trail system, um, and we have. Uh, our wildlife partners were a part of that uh, selection process for the grants. And I have also presented a, a single track to our wildlife agency partners in our uh, monthly coordination meetings. So they uh, understand that it was a part of this pilot program. There's a new um, e comment. Um... It says new trails concerns on noise pollution. Will the space immediately right behind our backyard fences be respected as a no trail zone? So we're not proposing creating any new trails as a part of this loop. Um, the trails are existing They're They're in the ground. Now, what we are doing is, um, adding a use some mountain biking to, as an allowed use to the to what's out there now. Um, the single track has also been out there. Um, you can look at aerials to see that they were out there for a couple of decades um, in, in Rice Canyon. Um, and so we're not proposing to create new trails, which you see there again um, at, for now. And then as Mark moves forward with the trail master plan, we're going to be identifying um, additional trail loops, segments, um, so hopefully we'll get some funding to to draft that plan. And I'll just reiterate as we develop that plan, we'll make sure to keep the community involved and get your participation on where those where those trails should go. Not seeing any additional questions or comments coming in on my email. Or on the Elix. I haven't seen anything new either. Received a comment via email uh, during this program. Will there be any type of headcount or guesstimate of how many bikers, hikers, and runners? Uh, that may use these two trails. Um, and you know, we had another comment suggest getting trail counters as a part of any grants that we are seeking. Um, and so uh, 
as we mentioned, Mark is in the process of submitting that grant to the county for the neighborhood reinvestment funds, and we may include that um, as one of the, the items that we're seeking funding for. But right now, no, we, we don't have trail counters at the city uh, to install. I'm getting a couple of emails um, right now uh, because of the one comment limit that they haven't registered yet on e comments. Um, so, this comment states that mountain bikers have used trails for 30 plus years with little to no maintenance other than local volunteers and users by leaving the trails in a similar state that they are in. Wouldn't it eliminate city budget impacts? Um, and with that, I mean, we're formalizing the system, so we want to know what the costs are. We want to know what the staffing levels need to be. That's, you know, part of formalizing the, the system. Um, and it's important information for us, you know, whether we count volunteer hours and we have that in our data and full set, um, we're still going to need to know what the cost is so that we can sustain the levels of, of what a trail user experience should be on the trail. Uh, the, comment, the additional comments are environment has been cited as a concern, but is there raw data or studies to back this up? Uh, well, the concern is that the, the uses would be expanded, that there would be user created trails, um, that there would be impacts to some of the species that are using the habitat out there. And that's one of the things we are going to be um, looking for as we manage for open space. Um, our biggest thing is adaptive management, and it's going to be the same for this program as well. If we start to see impacts, we we manage for it. If it means that um, we are seeing trails that are widening, we may have to, you know, uh, provide some options as far as how do we prevent that? Do we put in fencing? Do we need to shut down an area so that we restore it? Um, but a lot of it is adaptive. It's it's part of our our management plan for open space, and, and again for this trail system. Um, the comment also says uh, there have been bridges removed from adjacent canyons. If this is done by the city, why? Um, I believe the canyons they're referring to is not part of Rice or Snake Canyon. Um, and so those are likely not formal trails. Um, and the city removes these uh, bridges and, and, and things that are placed in the canyons that are not sanctioned by the city does present some liability for the city. Um, so until those trails and improvements are formalized, it's not a legal trail. Um, mountain biking in this area has increased exponentially as the city recognized the potential for a substantial positive economic impact. This is where this is this is if there is Access granted for mountain biking and outdoorsmanship. Um, there, we haven't studied the um, relationship between mountain biking and um, economic impact. I, I do, I do agree. If people are coming to the city to utilize some of our trail systems, you know, they're coming to also eat. Um, if they're driving, they're putting gas. They're stopping in areas. So I, you know, I, I do agree that there is um, a positive economic impact by bringing people into the city. Um, comment. Uh, um, I think it's a question of whether or not there'll be trails within the fuel modification zones immediately behind the backyards. Again, no, we are not proposing any new trails um, within the canyon. Uh, question about who will decide the uh, alignments for the final route in Snake Canyon, for example. Um, and then are there any plans in the future to include Rancho Del Rey Canyon race track at some point? It seems the city spends quite a bit of money removing bridges enforcement to keep people. Free. So the first question about final route um, for Snake Canyon is really uh, where we see the redundant trails are the entrances, the entrance on the eastern end by the fire station. There's probably about 
at least four, maybe five um, different drop-ins. So we would, um, you know, we reach out to those focus groups, the Sandia Mountain Biking Association and some of the trail runner hiking groups. So we may do that again when we are looking to figure out what the formal uh, alignment will be for that. Um, I'm not sure what the Rancho Del Rey Canyon racetrack is referring to. Um, so I can't, I, Mark, unless you know what that is, I can't comment on where where that is. No, I'm unfamiliar with that as well. But again, I mean, as we go into the trails master plan, we will look at, you know, the city citywide comprehensively of where we might want to add trails um, or enhance existing ones. So, another question. To find future announcements for volunteer trail maintenance days. Um, as soon as we get some of that information out, we'll be utilizing some of our social media um, pages for the city. Um, we can put those announcements in as well on our, our city web pages, on our calendars. Um, we'll be reaching out to our um, the, the focus groups so that they can also um, spread the news about those maintenance days. Does the city of Chula Vista have access to Strava Metro? Would be best at the trail data for the loop. Um, we, I, I don't have access to Strava Metro. Um, I know we do have access to Strava as we partnered with the County of San Diego and worked on the Eastern Otay Trail Alignment Study. So we do have access to, um, to Strava data, the, the paid version of Strava data. I'm not sure if that's called Strava Metro. Um, so. Got a comment that there are many athletes and professional Olympians here. Legal trails is amazing. Chula Vista is home to a handful of famous mountain bikers. Uh, we need to bring a Bentonville, Arkansas to Chula Vista. Comment for you, Mark. Uh, please include in your plans the extra efforts to highlight protection of flora, flora and fauna, noise pollution impacts to residents. Yes, we will, for sure. It's all about the balance, right? We talked about that before. have a comment uh, that supports the trail loop project. Uh, Chula Vista has famous and beloved single track mountain bike trails. The more we can preserve them as single tracks, the better. Uh, support the idea of making Snake Trail a one way westbound trail. It's important to think of safe access to the trails. Um, 50 mile per hour streets are incompatible with the vulnerable road users, such as bicyclists and pedestrians. I encourage the city to develop a strategy plan for safe access with livable speeds to the trails. I recommend class four bikeways, class one bikeways and widened sidewalks with tree line buffers and or rails, bicycle lists, friendly crosswalk buttons, prioritizing peds bikes when the push button at intersections is activated. Uh, NACDO provides additional design guidelines for safe streets. And so we are working with Frank Rivera at the city. Um, and he, uh, we, as we identify trail connections that have to go out to the streets, um, we are coordinating with him on what improvements need to be done out, let's say, on East 8th Street connecting to that candy cane um, lane. So we are, we are keeping that in mind and we are working um, with, with Frank. Uh, 
Christian can plant real trees and not cactus along the trail. So we, we have looked, there was a comment about adding trees, uh, shade trees along the trail. So again, keep in mind that this is an open space preserve system. We're looking for native vegetation um, that would be found in the open space. So um, I'm not sure what real trees um, you'd suggest, but if you have specific trees, you can go ahead and send me your suggestions. Um, the cactus in Rice Canyon are naturally uh, found in that area. We have done some enhancements um, per grants that we've received that we've added cactus um, along some of those slopes. Thank you for for the questions. I mean, these are, are questions um, you guys have. This says the race track canyon named after the bike trail is where bridges were recently removed that have been there for 20 years as a part of the single track system. It's the canyon between East J East H and East J Street, Sea Del Rey on the west, and Sea Ranch here on the east. Um, as I mentioned, those are actually not legal trails. Um, the trail system uh, that is formalized is the pathway, the sewer maintenance road behind the home along East H Street. Um, but it's part of the trail master plan that we'll be looking for in the future. This pilot program will collect data that tells us, you know, what impacts we're seeing from trail use and what costs and what staffing we need. And it'll help us to inform as we move forward with some of our uh, future trail planning um, efforts. The other um, the comment that has been brought up is as far as what trails have been approved by the wildlife agencies. So that's another consideration. Again, we picked this pilot loop trail because it was already covered by an environmental document. As we move forward with the trail planning, we will have to you know, consider the environmental analysis and, and the siting criteria in our conservation plan and whether or not it's appropriate to have trails in certain areas. Um, Sometimes if the trail is existing, doesn't say fits our siting criteria. Um, and so those are things we're going to have to look at and, and, and review um, as we're moving forward with additional trail planning with the trail master plan. Comment um, to not include any fire starter trees or invasive species of plants um, in the canyons. Also, please, uh, no tall palm fan leaf leaved trees. Uh, that uh, hope this pilot program finishes.
that there is a need for more of these trails to be legal. Question, has the city considered other communities like Sedona, Arizona that have very successful implementation of multi-trail use systems and have global destinations for hiking, biking, etc. cetera? Um, this while balancing the interests of both those looking to recreate and enjoy nature and preserve the environment. So I have not reached out beyond our county uh, boundaries. We work closely with our uh, partners with the County of San Diego. We worked with them along with seven other public agencies on the East Otay Trail alignment study that included the city of San Diego, Otay Water District, Border Patrol. Um, who am I missing on that? Um, oh, our, our, our wildlife agency partners, uh, US Fish and Wildlife Services, and the uh, State Department of Fish and Wildlife. Um, so we have research local nearby that we work with all the time, and we have worked on, on trail planning um, on the eastern end of Chula Vista. So um, we do have those resources here, and, and as we move forward with the trail planning, you know, we may move uh, beyond the county boundaries for some co coordination and input. Uh, question Can the city please make sure that the canyons are completely free of pump? Um, that, that is our goal is to get rid of invasive species in all of our open space areas. It is a matter of a budget, um, and um, we continually seek for grant funding um, throughout the year as. as Grant solic solicitations come out. We're, we're looking to see if we qualify, if we can have a strong application. Um, so that is our goal: is to keep our open space preserve systems with native vegetation and to remove anything that's invasive and non-native in our preserve system.
again, I am capturing everybody's comments, emails, yeah, e-link comments. Um, we're putting it in a matrix. I'm highlighting all the suggestions, concerns, um, recommendations, um, and that we'll take those back. We'll meet as a, a full uh, city team. Uh, it's our open space division in public works. We have Mark and landscape. Uh, myself in advanced planning, we'll meet with Frank um, as he deals with some of our street improvements. Um, and so these are things that we will take into consideration. Um, and we will continue to take comments. Um, again, the link is open. I think uh, Claudia said it was March 12th. And then uh, as we move forward to the city council hearing date, um, that they'll also have an e link for the agenda items on that uh, city council meeting. Does this loop system fall under parks and rec? Loop system is actually currently managed by our public works open space um, division. So it's our open space inspectors are out in the ground um, in those canyons. But question maybe as a part of the recommendation, we roll in some of the rangers from our, our parks and rec department um, the, that well, we need to consider um, looking for staffing and, and, and funding for our trail system. So I think that uh, we will wrap it up for tonight. Um, we did hit for a little past 6.30. Again, the link will remain open. Uh, you have our contact information. My contact information is also on the e-link um, page. Uh, so please you need to write us with your comments, questions. Um, and again, March 16th is we move forward to city council um, as an informational item and uh, Feel free to, to comment then and your comments will go straight to city council members as well. Um, and we look forward to moving. Uh, we look forward to moving forward with this project um, and, and additional trail planning. Uh, so thank you for your time tonight. Uh, we appreciate it and um, have a good night. Yes, thank you everyone. <laughs>